The early 2020s have not been kind to game developers. It seems like every other month there's either massive layoffs or another studio closing down, and the trend keeps continuing, but this time it hits a little bit closer to home for me personally. That's right, Game Informer, what was once the biggest gaming magazine around, has now shut its doors officially and is no longer. I did just learn about this, so it did kind of just hit me in the feels, and I do want to use this video as an opportunity to look through like some of my old gaming magazines that I've acquired from Game Informer throughout the years, but I also want to use this as an opportunity to rant about modern video games, or at least game development and where it's going in the future. Within like, what, the same week, the online 360 storefront has closed, and GameStop the company that owns Game Informer for a very long time made a tweet like shitting on them being like I wish you bought physical games now even though they cut the physical prints for Game Informers like before if you were just like a GameStop member you got Game Informers that's how I acquired a lot of these and I have stopped using that service whenever they cut this feature but you could for a little while there for these like last couple copies up here you could like uh, go to their website and for like 20 bucks a year or something like that, uh, start getting the physical releases again. Which one? The uh, uh, issue 367. As far as I know, this is their last copy, which is for Dragon Age The Veil Guard, which is already a, a game people aren't super hot on even before it comes out. But, you know, we'll see what happens there. I wish... I wish big studios or companies like GameStop had a little bit more sentimentality when they just nuked a bunch of people's jobs. I wish we could just say, hey, let's make one final issue where we just look back at the memories instead of just shutting down its doors or just as bad from what I understand. If you go to Game Informer's website as of now, it just redirects to links about the studios closing. Keep in mind, there is hours upon hours, days, weeks of hard work that Game Informer staff used to make just online content. I remember, you know, I wasn't reading website articles online, I've never been that kind of guy, but I remember going onto the website and they had like the vault where they had like their studio like shells of all the games and you literally could take a camera and just look around the vault and I remember doing that as a kid because I was into that kind of dumb stuff and as far as I know, all of that is just gone. I don't want to just be a hoarder of physical media, but I am the type of person who, when something is gone, I want it 10 times more. The FOMO hits hard for me, and I've gotten to the point in age where I've seen a lot of the things I grew up on are starting to disappear, and now I have to like grasp at straws trying to recover it before they're gone forever. There are YouTube channels I used to watch that have been nuked, I can't watch them anymore. All my old games I've lost for one reason or another, and I'm trying to slowly get them all back. And the Xbox 360 store thing, that could be in a video in itself, but it's another thing where, in the grand scheme of time, like, 20 years of a service is not very long. The way that social media and internet culture seems to be thriving on, it's just whatever is popular right now, whatever's going on right now, that's like the heat of the conversation. Everything else just dies and then eventually when it dies and no one cares about it, you are free to scrap it from existence. And I am just not okay with that. Especially things like video games, these worlds that we create and get lost in, things that you make all these memories with, and if a service or a server somewhere goes out, then it's lost in time forever. And that's why we have to archive this shit, and that's why physical media has to exist. I'm gonna move the microphone so I can actually get to these. If I didn't have this giant stack of magazines, I couldn't read these right now. I'm not gonna pretend like I read these things cover to cover. Like, even the ones I've gotten in the mail recently, you know, I just flip through it and, you know, it is what it is. But, I do like having the option. I do like seeing, like, a magazine for, like, oh, Uncharted 2. I can actually see the perspective of time that this existed in when this was, like, a new game. Afro Samurai in the back cover. God of War 3. Oh, 
uh, the two issues that I did read cover to cover, these two right here, uh, Mass Effect 3 and Elder Scrolls 5 Oblivion, Oblivion. Growing up, I didn't have like a steady access to the internet. I had it here and there, but like these magazines for a long time were the only way I could read about the games upcoming that I cared about. Like when I look, when I was reading this, these were like the first screenshot to Skyrim I ever saw. It was mind blowing. And little things like the end of the year lists where everyone has their favorite games. They do like little top 10 lists. Seeing what game won, game of the months and the reviews, stuff like that. I love this stuff back in the day. And, so, and some of the top 10 lists are just like top 10 stupid video game titles. Yeah, I just have a lot of good memories of like getting something in the mail. I'd be like, oh. I have no idea what an XCOM enemy unknown is. They're making a South Park game. No way. Like, these little surprises, and then you read about it, and then they become a part of gaming culture. Like, a lot of these covers, it's like the first time I ever saw these games. The first time uh, I saw this, God of War 3, uh, this was like the only image I had of God of War in my brain for years before I actually got around to playing it. So a lot of these covers and games and articles are just wrapped into my subconscious for these games and, and will continue to do so. A lot of these games I, I still haven't played. My backlog is well over a decade and a half old at this point. So I wanted this video to like be a fun reflection upon these things. I could do like a deep dive one day. Maybe I'll do that in the future. That was a video I was planning on doing before all this happened, but I wanted to talk about some of my memories and again, just to rant because I don't want this to be a boohoo video. Like obviously magazines are not something that the general public want or need anymore and it's owned by a company that sells physical media which is slowly becoming less and less necessary or wanted there are people like me who want that stuff still but most people don't and i get that but this is another case in a million where the giant corporation is not going to protect the people who made their work so great they're not going to protect the content like what made this so great they're not going to give them a final swan song instead they're just gonna nuke the entire thing and now the people who enjoyed that content have to pick up the fallen pieces and like scramble it back together but a lot of the people who worked for game informer back in the day or now are going to continue to do great work video game journalism is um a dying platform in itself right there but there are platforms like youtube and twitch that just about anybody could do like i said again if gamestop really wanted to protect these people give them some kind of platform you can make very small platforms that do not cost that much money so 367 there is now a number for the complete set of game informers one goal for the future. But if you guys have any memories with Game Informer you'd like to share down below, I'd love to hear them. I know it's kind of a sad week for gaming. Bungie just lost a couple hundred employees. Xbox 360 Marketplace just shut down. A lot of the relics of gaming's past are disappearing. And they're only going to exist in the physical media we collect. They're only going to exist in the hard drives we preserve. And most importantly, the memories we keep. So it is us to us. So it is us to up, so it is up, oh my, so it is up to us to keep those alive. That's why I'm making videos like this and will continue to do so in the future. And if that's the kind of thing you think you'd be interested in, please subscribe or just like the video. I'm a small YouTuber. Any algorithm help I can get is much appreciated. But most importantly, just thank you for watching. And until next time with that, I leave you.